Hello and welcome to the Swine Disease Reporting System. Uh, this is the report number 68 of the SDRS. We're going to cover the findings from the previous month, the month of September. My name is Edison Magalhães, here at the SDRS studio. Hello, my name is Giovanni at the SDRS. Hi, my name is Guilherme, also at the SDRS. Hello, Daniel Linhares with the uh, SDRS. And today we're going to cover, as I mentioned, the findings from the previous month, the month of September 2023. Uh, but also we have the pleasure to have him here today with us, Dr. Gustavo Silva, as our invited guest. Dr. Silva is an assistant professor at Iowa State University, and he got his DVN from Universidade Federal do Mato Grosso and PhD from Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. After finishing his graduate program, Dr. Silva joined Carthage Innovative Sol Swine Solutions as a research scientist, where he coordinated the, the field research activities in the company. And after that, Dr. Silva returned to Iowa State University as a faculty member and are currently uh, developing research regarding field epidemiology applied to several species, but mainly swine. In today's episode, Dr. Silva will discuss with us the usage of diagnostic and production data to early detect uh, animal health threats. So Dr. Silva, welcome on board. Thanks for, for accepting our invitation and joining today the SDRS. Thank, thanks for the invitation. I'm glad to to be here to discuss, uh, to have a good discussion today. Thank you, Dr. Silva, for being here. And before we go for the discussion there, Guilherme, can you give us a highlight of uh, the main finds for the SDRS for the month of September? Yes, let's start with PERS virus. That is our first page. The activity of PERS virus is still below the expected when we look to our forecast model which is good news, right? But on the other hand, we are having a substantial increase in the percentage of positive submissions coming from the win to market category. So we are starting to have like this cold remote that is gonna come for the winter and we are already have some activity of PERS in the win to market. And looking to the regional level, we are having an increased activity bill, uh, above the expected in the states of Illinois and Ohio when looking to overall PERS detection. So good news at the overall detection of course there with some activity in Illinois, Ohio. What about the enteric coronavirus? For enteric coronavirus, PED had a moderate increase also in the winter market category, nothing above the expected for the period itself, but we are getting uh, close to the winter months, as I mentioned for PERS as well, and the activity of this pathogen increase in the, in the winter, but we are having previous increased activity right now. And as we mentioned in the last podcast, we were already detecting an uptick in activity in the south farms of increased percentage of positive emissions for PED. So it's some alert that we have to talk here for, uh, about this pathogen. So some unusual activity of PED starting earlier than expected there in the field. So any comments from our advisor group about PED activity? Yes, for our advisor group, this information is always a concern, is also a concern for them, because this is a bad sign since the manure season is starting. So we are already having positive uh, sites or positive samples that might affect that we have more outbreaks in the upcoming months. Mm -hmm. mm. And how about the respiratory agents, mycoplasma, hyomone, influenza, and the porcine psychovirus type 2? Well, for these pathogens as well, we are having increased activity in the winter market category for all of them and what raise an alert as well. But I would like to highlight mostly uh, mycoplasma hypnomonia because we are having an increased percentage of positive emissions coming from tissue samples. So this is more correlated with clinical signs in the field, right? And when we look to specifically to the ISU, this is diagnosed data, the confirmed tissue diagnosis. Mycoplasma is in the top 10 uh, diseases diagnosis for this month right now. And this is the first time that this happened in the year. So at the beginning of the year, we, we were having an increased number of submissions for mycoplasma that we identified that most of them were deep tracheal swabs that were production systems trying to go to the elimination in their, in their sites. And right now we are having these tissue submissions coming positive. So it, it might be something going on in the field related with mycoplasma. Yeah, so it seems like one common theme here is the growth finish activity, right? For all the monitored pathogens. So another fasten your seat belts, prepare winter is coming, coming kind of early for a growth finish. So south farms, time to biosecurity and biocontainment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, uh, Giovanni and, and Guilherme for the, the bringing the updates from the SDRS. So now let's move for our discussion with Dr. Silva. 
Uh, and Dr. Shiva would like to ask you first, if, can you talk a little bit more about the importance of using diagnostic and production data uh, from swine farms for disease surveillance? How are these, these tools contributing to the swine industry? Sure. Diagnostics can help uh, in different ways. Uh, some farms may use the diagnostics to uh, prove freedom from disease or make sure that the animals are negative or the soil uh, farm is negative from a disease, but also can be used to move, move animals between one farm and another. And thinking about uh, when a site uh, broke with any of disease, we can understand in the context of a disease control elimination, uh, surveillance tools can help us understand if we are in the right track uh, to getting close to negative status again, or at least create uh, time points or uh, things that they can keep track always and see if they need to uh, perform uh, another intervention or they should be fine in their track. Otherwise, uh, production data help us to measure basically the impact of the disease that can be uh, in the face of an outbreak that we can try to understand or create expectation on how many weeks, for example, we will bring back uh, to a baseline production, but also uh, can manage expectations with the production people that we are going to get there and we should be fine. And also uh, production data, if you think about, they measure what happened in the animals. And in the case of disease outbreaks, they also can serve to early identify signals that may be potentially uh, associated with disease outbreaks. So after that, when we saw those in instabilities, in instabilities, we can always go back and perform uh, investigate at the, uh, investigations at the herd level. Hey, Dr. Silva, you talked about production data, the need for monitor disease activity at a regional level. So can you elaborate a little bit more about the benefits of sharing and analyzing this data to identify early animal health threats that are occurring in the field at a regional level? Mm. Yes, I mean, these projects, I believe uh, they have a common benefit because all every time that you comp combine data from multiple participants, uh, we can try to understand disease occurrence or at least patterns uh, of disease occurrence. And then we can understand and compare incidence or prevalence detection of the disease in different for example, regionals. So when we try to start to understand uh, how those incidents difference between regions, we can try to understand their patterns and then we can try to ask questions, okay, why these areas are having uh, less incidents compared to others? So we can understand, okay, is this movement of disease basically from uh, infected uh, uh infected site to a, a new area or are they doing anything different re related to biosecurity or or vaccinations or the type of stuff but i believe every time that you combine it's the power of big data uh when you use wisely right mm -hmm. and getting a little bit deeper on that if we use mycoplasma pneumonia as an example Back in your postdoc days, you did uh, some great work on the economics of Michael. Can you remind us the what's the economic benefit of targeting mycoplasma control and elimination? Yeah, in that study that we did in 2019, we worked with Dr. Paul Yaski from Swine Vet Center uh, to try to understand the cost benefit. And by that time, using uh, production data from from his clients, we saw that the production impact of mycoplasma, the production impact only, right? When the thing about mortality, feed efficiency and mortality, the economic impact combined was about $5.50. But we can also include the cost associated uh, with antibiotics and vaccinations, right? And then talking with uh, people from our industry, they believe that that still remains a little bit the same between three to six dollars, and that will depend on feed cost and market prices. But overall, uh, it's an important pathogen that we should be looking uh, forward to establish more and more uh, big systems are trying to 
uh, eradicate the pathogen. And I believe uh, it's one less pathogen into the the formula, right? Mm -hmm. And Dr. Silva, just following up with mycoplasma and also other endemic pathogens, there is a debate in the industry to eliminate some of them, right? Mycoplasma, we already have a lot of data, but we are discussing also PED elimination, like most of the conference that we go, they talk about that. And could you share with us what is the importance of having this big data, as you mentioned, like to use these, all this information to help in these elimination programs that the industry are trying to accomplish? Yeah, that's a very good question. I believe both of them together complement each other, right? Because we can use diagnostic data to measure prevalence, incidence, and most important, to classify the sites. And once we classify the sites, we classify the status, we can basically use the production data to measure that impact, right? And I don't think that, uh, I believe uh, the industry uh, understand the benefits of uh, eliminating mycoplasma already. As you guys mentioned, there's a lot of production system pushing forward to that. And the current state of PD and the discussions that the industry is doing, I believe is the right time with all the infrastructure that different programs are putting together and giving that the PD uh, incidence, it's lower comparing to the other diseases such as PERS. I believe we can, we are in the, in the timing of trying to push that 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 subject to the industry. Oh, very good. Thanks for the discussion. Thanks for taking your time, Dr. Silva, to join us and bringing this perspective. And that was it for this month, guys. And I see you guys in the next report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.